Happy Sabbath. I am Elder Rhonda Lockett. On behalf of Pastor Hayes, we welcome you to our virtual worship service. We also welcome Pastor Alicia Jones, who is our guest speaker this morning. Um, as we uh, move forward, um, I have something to tell you from the Elder's Corner. So it says, walk with God when your heart needs company. Turn to God when you need someone to lean on. Take his hand when you feel alone. He is there when you need him most. Never give up, never back down, never lose faith. Trust God with all your heart. Let us pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus on this beautiful Sabbath morning. You are our protector, Father, and we just want to thank you and glorify you as we prepare our hearts for service, Father. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would speak through our guest speaker in the name of Jesus, Father. We also pray and lift up our sick are shut in, Father. We are uh, praying for healing upon their bodies, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would visit the sick room, Father, please, in the name of Jesus. Father, we also pray for the rural family, Father, where they had laid Prince Philip to rest, Father. They need to be comforted, Father. And we ask, Father, that you would visit each and every family member, Father, and that your Holy Spirit will fall afresh upon their uh, family because of the beloved loss. So, Father, we are thank you, you Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. We're so happy to have you with us here this morning. Uh, we had a rough week this week in the city of Pittsburgh. We've had two young men who were killed, one with 17, one with 15. And it's just a lot going on. Our COVID cases are going up. So we want to just remind everyone, you know, to be hopeful. And remember that God is still on the throne and he will see us through. So I want to tell you that there will be no Bible study today. Um, so we will hope to be back next week. Tomorrow board members, we have a meeting at 10 o'clock. The board minutes were emailed to everyone. So please check your email. Also the link is there for the meeting also. 
We want to tell you that uh, next week is our children's church and next Sunday, our COVID cast team will have, will have a meeting also at 11 o'clock. We want to remind you about our PTPOG every Sunday through Thursday. I'm going to tell you something about what we talked about this week. We pastor preached on the staying power. We know we need our staying power to stay focused on our daily lives. And then he went to spiritual warfare. We're in warfare every day. You know, the devil enemy is always on his job to get our mind. And so we have to fight. We have to equip ourselves with the armor of God so that we can be ready for battle. Also, we want to give you a date to say we, we will have another virtual camp meeting. Save the date. The date is June 16th through the 19th. And the main speaker will be Dana C. Edmonds. So put that on your calendar, virtual camp meeting. Also, we want to remind you about our prayer meeting every Tuesday at seven o'clock. Uh, we're on Zoom. Also, we want to remind you about our tithing off offering. You can do it through our online giving app, the Adventist online giving app, or at the web Hillcrest website, there is a tab for that that you can give that way also. So with that being said, I just want to say to all of us that we need to hold on. So God is not through with you yet, with us yet. This life is only a test. Trials come and they go, but a word for you is hold on. The time seems to be harder from the steps you took to get started. But if you only keep the faith, you will surely win the race. Don't give up on life. You can win this fight. Don't throw in the towel. He'll work it out. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. You are to build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Thank you so much and have a blessed Sabbath day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, welcome to uh, Hillcrest Sabbath Worship. It is such a blessing to be back with you on today. I want to say a word of thanks to those who were in charge on last week as I was away. Uh, you took care of business and God, amen, blessed in a very powerful way. So I appreciate so much the leadership and those who came on and supported on last week. Uh, this week we're back and we're so glad to have you with us this morning. Thank you for choosing to be here uh, at Hillcrest Worship this morning. I know there's many places you could choose, especially online to be with. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And I appreciate so much uh, our church family. We have just been blessed over these past few months. I want to let you know though, that we are moving ahead and moving forward towards getting back into the physical church. So continue to pray for us. Continue to ask God to lead us as leaders as we seek to put together a logistical plan so that we can get back into uh, the building, if you will, uh, and serve God in that way uh, very, very, very soon. Continue to pray for us and God will lead. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your financial support. You guys have just been awesome. Uh, in your giving. And I just thank God for you so much and for your faithfulness to God throughout uh, this dark time that we've been over the last year or so with this uh, crazy COVID-19 pandemic situation. But God has seen us through. God has brought us on the other side of this thing. And so we are blessed and we are highly favored, I believe, by the power of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got an awesome, awesome program ahead of us today. We've got a wonderful, powerful preacher of the Word of God who is with us, and we're going to introduce her in just a little bit. But I want you to hang in with us today because you are going to be blessed. And if you get offline, you're going to miss it. I don't want you to miss it today. So hang in with us. 
and stick with us just for a little while today and watch and see how God transforms your life this morning. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to be favored uh, by another presentation from our COVID-19 task force. Elder Lewis, could you come forward for us today? Good morning, saints of God. Happy Sabbath to you. So nice to see you again. God has graced us with another year. Um, I'm bringing you some updates on the COVID task force. And um, I want to bring up Johnson & Johnson. Um, nearly 7 million people have received Johnson & Johnson's vaccine. Can you please mute your... Um, thank you. Nearly 7 million people have received Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, we are aware that six women between the ages of 18 and 48 years of age um, develop blood clots in their head. Um, one had passed away, one is critical, and four are still fighting. Um, I would really like to solicit you to um, pray for these families. We know that usually when you get a vaccine, it's usually redness, swelling, and pain at the site. And so um, we're really saddened about these women and um, it's amazing that it's just women, but um, I just solicit your prayers for that. I know God will um, hold them and heal them as we continue to move on and pray for them. But I really um, want to um, just um, thank God for the 7 million women that are still living and still um, immunized and still walking. And so now I would like to get to Allegheny County. Um, I watched our um, cases all this week. And so I just added them all together for us. So over 2,000 um, cases have confirmed in Allegheny County just this week. And you know what, it's even more than that because I don't even have, have today's um, dates or Wednesday's dates. And we have had four deaths. And so um, we already know the primary ages that are carrying it are 25 to 49 years old and 50 to 64 years old. But I still want to include, too, that zero to five years old are affected with COVID-19 also, and they can't even get any medicine or a um, vaccine. So I just want us to be um, aware that when we're out there with no masses and, and we're not protecting ourselves or protecting anyone else. So when um, we hear of people I'm dying from the COVID, I mean, from the COVID disease. I mean, it's really um, painful to hear, but when you know that it is hitting your family members, it really comes home to you. And we do, I have a friend, I have two friends, her brother died from COVID and I have a friend that her son died. And even our pastor even shared to us that he had someone in his family that died from COVID. So, so when these diseases start hitting home, they really get real. And so I just want to um, encourage you to please continue to wear your masks. And we even know that almost half our church is immunized and praise the Lord. But we don't know about them other variants that's out there. You know, I mean, everything about this nasty virus is new and they really don't know either. So I'm begging you to please wear your masks, continue to stay six feet apart and wash your hands. And I want you to know that since March the 14th of 2020, there has been 93,299 cases of COVID. Um, hospitalization has been 6,378. And deaths just in Allegheny County, this is 1,831 deaths here. So I beg you to please continue to do what we have been taught to do. 
also they're opening it up for teenagers to get these vaccines now. And I beg you to please encourage your family and your friends to get this vaccine. Um, Pfizer's vaccine, it goes from 16 years old and up. Moderna vaccine goes from 18 years and up. And um, you probably don't want to hear this, but Johnson & Johnson's vaccines go from 18 years and up too. And I'm sure that it is on pause, but I believe it's going to be back on the market. So I say, um, pray for Lee, prayerfully keep praying, okay? And I want you to know that Pfizer has already announced that um, he believes, they believe that we are going to need a booster shot next year. It's not a surprise to me. This virus is a, just like the flu. It's a virus. We get a flu vaccine every year, and I believe we're going to be getting these vaccines every year, too. So thank you, church. Thank you for allowing me to share. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Lewis, for informing us, giving us that information. You know, we want to stay abreast of what is going on uh, with the COVID-19 situation. And I really appreciate our COVID-19 task force uh, giving us and informing us. You know, it's important that we not be afraid, we not be fearful, but that we be wise in how we approach uh, these days that we are in right now. So I really appreciate uh, so much Elder Lewis and the task force uh, the information that they're putting together for us. In our service today, it is time for our scripture reading and our scripture reading is found in the book of Ruth, chapter one, and we are reading verses 19 through 22. That's Ruth chapter one, reading verses 19 through 22. I am reading from the Good News Bible and the Bible reads, they went in until they came, uh, they went on until they came to Bethlehem, and when they arrived, the whole town became excited, and the women there exclaimed, is this really Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she answered. Call me Mara, because Almighty God has made my life bitter. And when I left here, I had plenty, but the Lord has brought me back without a thing. Why call me Naomi when the Lord Almighty has condemned me and sent me trouble? This then was how Naomi came back from Moab with Ruth, her Moabite daughter-in-law, when they arrived in Bethlehem. The barley harvest was just beginning. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Before we uh, go on to our uh, music for divine worship, I just want to introduce our speaker for the hour. Uh, our speaker is somebody who I feel absolutely favored and blessed and privileged uh, to be able to introduce and uh, present before you. Uh, we have with us none other than a pastor, Alicia uh, Jones. Uh, Pastor Jones pastors the uh, Blessed Hope Seventh-day Adventist Church in Erie, Pennsylvania, and uh, Pastor Jones is a powerful, powerful, powerful woman of God, a uh, minister of God, and a wonderful presenter and speaker of the Word of God. You are going to be blessed. If you don't know Alicia yet, you will know after today who she is. I am so proud and excited uh, for her, and she is a graduate of my alma mater, OU University. Hallelujah. Yes, Oakwood, the Oaks. That's right. That's right. Oakwood is the place to be. And I am so excited to have her with us this morning. She does a daily program on weekday mornings uh, called Stay Woke and Pray at 7 a.m. So PTPO Jeers. PTPOG years, you can get an early morning shot of the Holy Ghost. If you go online on Facebook, find Alicia Jones and follow her. I promise you, you will be blessed. She does an awesome program every morning at 7 a.m., Monday through Friday, 
And uh, we are just so blessed to have her with us. She does, as I said, stay woke and pray. And she just prays the Holy Ghost down every single morning. So if you need to be full of the Holy Spirit on the mornings that you got to go to work or do work or whatever it is you need to do, go ahead and get online with her program. But again, I am so proud and excited uh, to hear and see what God is going to do through my sister, uh, my compatriot at arms, uh, Pastor Alicia Jones. I hope you're excited. I hope you're anticipatory of what God is about to do for us. So after the music, has been given today. The next voice you shall hear will be that of Pastor Alicia Jones. Hear ye her. God bless. of things What do they really mean Some people say that I have everything But those things are so dissatisfying There's a name in my soul and confused I feel totally up you lonely and so used who I really need and trust is you Give her all I need. 
Hallelujah. 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 Oh, man, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me, God. Hallelujah. Oh, man, y'all don't know me. I'm sorry. I'm already cutting up. Bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. How many of y'all need the Lord today? I don't know about you, but I need the Lord today. I need thee. Yes, God, I need thee. Hallelujah. God is on the throne. And oh, man, there's a scripture that says that God is able to defeat the enemy that's great greater than me. And I don't know if you all have any enemies that are greater than you, but I'm so glad that God is able to fight the enemy that's greater than me. God is able to move in those situations that are greater than me. Those things that I cannot deal with on my own, man, I don't have to. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad that we get to come to a God and we can just say, God, I need you. Mm. All the word says that whoever comes to the Lord, he would in no ways cast you out. So you don't even have to be ashamed of asking God and saying, God, I need thee. Oh, me. I mean, like sometimes people come to me and they want me to do stuff for them that I don't feel like doing. And I'm like, mm -mm, you might have to go ask somebody else. But God ain't like me. I'm so happy God ain't like me. When you go to God, you ask God, you be like, Jesus, I need you. Jesus is like, I got you, girl. I got you, son. You, I am yours. Hallelujah, I need you. Oh my goodness, I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. Mm, Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah. God is on the throne, he is good. Oh, I just love the Lord. I greet you, greetings from Erie, Pennsylvania. We are just 90 miles to your north. It is just a little colder, uh, a little more windy, a lot more snow up here, uh, but we bless God anyway. And so we are not, we are, we are neighbors. We're just, but we do have less COVID cases, bless God. Uh, <laughs> But otherwise, we got a whole lot more cold. But the, the lake is beautiful. The lake is beautiful. So I just praise God for you all allowing me to be with you this afternoon. I guess we're right at noontime. And so I thank you for allowing me to, be, to, me to be with you. I'm excited about what God is going to say and what God is going to do in our midst today. So let's pray and get in the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you are good. Your mercy, it does endure forever, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are with us. Lord, I ask that you would give us a mouth and wisdom that cannot be resisted, oh God. Father, I pray that you will write your words on the hearts of your people, oh God, using an iron pen with a diamond tip, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, I prophesy, Lord, that as the word goes out, oh God, your people will be restored. Your people will be rejuvenated. Your people will be renewed, oh God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you will grow faith today, Lord, for faith for some people who need to see you move on their behalf, oh God, that you will grow faith in some people who have been, who have felt like giving up, oh God. And Father, I thank you that they will have renewed faith, renewed strength, oh God, and they will continue on in righteousness, oh God, believing that you are going to do and fulfill your promises in their life. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We are in the book of Ruth. And while the book is called Ruth, let's be very clear, there would not be a Ruth without a Naomi. Uh, see, there is no Ruth without Naomi. The word tells us that Naomi, along with her husband and her two sons, they leave Bethlehem at a time of famine. They leave Bethlehem during a time of famine and they go to Moab. I guess in their minds, they said, look, it's pretty bad here. I better go somewhere else. And, 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 and I think I can do better for myself in Moab. And so, uh, Naomi with her husband, Elimelech and her two sons, they go on to Moab. When they get to Moab, unfortunately, Elimelech, he dies. Uh, but after a while, her two sons, they end up having, uh, getting married. They get married to Orpah and to Ruth. And after a while, after a few more years, her sons died. And when Naomi gets to a place where she has buried her husband and she has buried her two sons. She's decided, man, there is nothing left for me in Moab. I need to get back where I came from. I, I need to go back uh, to, to the place where I once was. The word says that she heard that Bethlehem, the famine had passed. The famine had listed 
lifted. The hard time in Bethlehem had lifted. And so she's on her way back to Bethlehem. Now, the word tells us that on her way back, her two daughter-in-laws, they came with her and they were traveling. And, and I believe that Naomi, she, she got her mind about her. She got her wits as she was traveling and she was sitting there thinking to herself, I don't have nothing for these girls. I love them dearly, but I don't have a thing for them. I don't have a husband. I don't have, I just don't have anything for them. I cannot provide for them. I'm broke. At this point, I'm a widow. What is a widow going to do for these young ladies? And so she finally, she says, look, y'all, I love you. I love you dearly. It has been a wonderful ride. I thank you so much for loving me. And I will never forget you, but y'all need to go on home. Go back to your own father's house. Go back to your own mama. I'm sure you can find you a nice Moab young man. You can go on, go back to your old gods. Go on, do what you used to do. Uh, Cause I ain't got nothing for you anymore. And, and they said, oh no, mother Naomi, we're never gonna leave you. We just love you so much. She's like, no, but I'm serious, I'm broke. See what had happened was I'm broke and I'm going to be at the mercy of other people and you don't need to be at the mercy of other people. You don't have to be broke with me. You don't have to struggle with me. You can go back to your daddy's house and your father will provide for you until he finds you a suitable husband and you would have a husband to provide for you. See, the truth of the matter is I ain't got nothing no more. It's, it's, it's done for me. And Orpha, she was like, mm, she felt right. She about right. She is about broke. Maybe I need to go on back home. Uh, there's still food in my father's house. And so she said, you know what, Miss Naomi, I love you dearly. And it's been hard. It's been a great ride. It's been a wonderful journey. And she cried her tears. She said, I don't want to leave you, but I don't want to be broke either. Um, so I am going to catch you on the next go round. You will be in my heart forever. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye. She said a nice sweet bye with tears in her eyes, right? And so she leaves. And Ruth was like, mm -mm, I ain't going. I ain't going. I'm sticking right here with you. And she's like, but but seriously, like, look, your, your sister-in-law, she left. Go. You know, I'm amazed because there had to be something that Naomi did. During her time when these women were married to her sons, they, they must have learned something from Naomi for Ruth to be like, mm -mm, I'm not going there. It was better in Naomi's house than it was in Ruth's dad's house. There was something, the spirit in Naomi's home was sweeter than it was in her father's home. I don't know what kind of family Ruth came from, but what I know is that she rather be broke and not understand where her next meal was coming from than to leave Naomi. She rather uh, walk this path with her. I believe that, that Naomi knew God. I believe that Naomi had so much of a the Holy Ghost on the inside of her that Ruth decided I would rather fend for my life with you than to go back to what I used to know. I used to know a life without peace. I used to know a life without joy. I used to know a life that was subject to the gods of my nation. But I am convinced that my lot would be better with you than for me to go by myself. I am convinced that my lot would be better in your house than in my father's house. Now, understand what she was saying. Uh, in this time period, a woman could not own land. A woman could not own property. So if by chance she is saying it is better for me to be with you who is broke and at the sub and you are subject to the goodwill of other people than to go back to my father's house who had land, who had money. It's better to, to be with you and to be with your God and to be with your people and to be whatever that spirit is on the inside of you. I want that. That's what she was saying. She was like, I want that. I would rather be with that than what I, with what I know. And, you know, as much as Naomi tried, she's like, uh, Ruth finally said, uh, where you go, I'm going to go. Where you live, that's where I'm going to live. And she said, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you are buried, there I am going to be buried. I am not nothing, but death will keep me from you. And she's like, okay, all right, well, come on, let's be broke together. Let's struggle together. You want to be broke with me? Come on, let's be broke. Let's go, let's go back to Bethlehem and we be broke. 
I mean, you know, if I get a piece of bread, I give you half of it. You know, we can we can split the toast, okay? So at any rate, so here here we go, and Naomi and Ruth they get to Bethlehem. And when they get to Bethlehem, the word says that all of the women, they gather there and they're excited. They're like, oh, is this, is this Naomi? Is Naomi back? And then Naomi, she says, verse, this is uh, Ruth chapter one, verse 20. And she said to them, call me not Naomi, call me Mara for the almighty have, have dealt very bitterly with me. Now the word Naomi means pleasant. Her, her, her actual name means pleasant. And Naomi, she looked at them. She said, mm -mm, don't call me Naomi anymore. Don't call me pleasant anymore. I don't want you to sit back and look at me and, and call me something that I no longer am. Call me Mara. I'm bitter. Uh, call me Mara. The, the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. Call me Mara because I, I left here with something. I left here with my sons. I left here with my husband. I left here and I thought that I could do better. I thought that we were getting away from trouble and all I found was trouble when I got there. Uh, don't call me. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara because my life is bitter at this moment. Uh, the the hand of the Lord is against me. The Lord has testified against me. Don't call me Naomi. She said, my life is bitter, so call me bitterness. Call me Mara. I find it very interesting when life has a way of messing us over, when life has a way of beating us up, when life has a way of shutting us down, of uh, when life, we, we find ourselves in, in this place where, of life where we plan to, you know, when you leave a place, you plan on coming back with more. When you leave a place, you plan on, you, you're leaving saying, look, I'm, I, I gotta get out of here. You know, I'm not gonna stay around here, you know, in the midst of this famine and, and, and watch y'all and waste away. I'm gonna go to another place. And by the time y'all see me again, y'all gonna see me in a nice car. You know, I'm gonna be driving an Escalade the next time you see me. You know, maybe I'll have a Tesla the next time you see me. Oh man, the, the, I know I might still shop at the Goodwill, the thrift store now. But next time you see me, you know, I'm going to have on a little Versace, a little Gucci. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have it made the next time you see me. And, and when you have that thing in your mind, and then the next time they see you, you're a whole lot worse than you were. There, there is something on the inside of us that we're like, mm, you're coming, you, you, you left with your, your head up a little bit, but now your head is bowed down. Uh, now you come with, with, with great humility. You come uh, with, with great shame, you know, like, like, a, like a little dog with his, with his tail, uh, you know, underneath him because you're like, man, life has dealt me a wretched hand. Uh, life has beat me up. Life has beat me down. I used to think I was high and mighty. I used to think I had it together. I used to think that I had a lot of wisdom. I thought that Oakwood University education was going, was going to insulate me from the mess. I thought uh, that, that, that because I did the whole church thing right, that I was not going to face some of these things. I thought, you know, if, if I lived a certain way, if I follow God a certain way, that there were some pains that I would never have to face. But doggone it, I was wrong about that. I was wrong about that. And now I find myself in a place where I have been beaten down. And don't call me, don't call me Naomi, because life has been bitter to me. I think a lot of times when we face bitter situations, we, we blame God. The first person that Naomi blamed was God. She didn't blame her husband. She didn't blame her children. She didn't blame the crazy people in Moab. No, she blamed God. <laughs> She said it was the almighty who has dealt bitterly, bitterly with me. I don't know about you, but I think that there are times in our lives where things go wrong. And the first one we blame is God. I know, I know church life told us not to blame God. And so we don't verbalize it. We don't say it out loud that we're angry with God. 
We don't say it out loud that we are blaming God for the fact that we lost a loved one. We don't say it out loud that we are blaming God for the fact that our job did not go the way we thought it was going to go. We don't say it out loud that we are blaming God for the fact that we moved to a new city, a new state, and that place is whooping up on us. You know, the truth of the matter is when things don't go the way we want them to go, we oftentimes look at God like, God, where were you? You know, the word says that you're going to protect us and you're going to keep us. So, so when you are burying your child, you sitting here like, God, what, what happened to the protection? What happened to your angels that give you, uh, you, you giving your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways? Lord, what happened to that? When you find out you have a diagnosis uh, that, that the doctors cannot cure, all of a sudden, Lord, what happened to that healing? What happened to by Jesus' stripes I'm healed? Lord, why am I not walking in divine health? Lord, help me understand that when your marriage go, uh, is not just on the rocks, but baby, your, your foundation is rocks. Uh, when your marriage gets to a place where you don't know what to do with that man and that man ain't got a clue of what to do with you either. What happens then? And you sitting here and you're like, but Jesus, I thought you was giving me a Boaz. Boaz gets sick of Ruth too, baby. <laughs> Ruth gets sick of Boaz sometimes. <laughs> Look, look, we're, we're, we're looking at God and we're like, God, why am I having these troubles? We have been convinced. I don't know who convinced you because the word didn't say it, but we have been convinced that if we follow God, that life would not give us any trouble. That if we follow God, life is going to be peaches and cream. Uh, that if we follow God, COVID-19 ain't going to hit our house. We have been convinced that, that, that when we are following God, that, that, that when economic downturn happens, that I'm not going to lose my job. Show me that scripture. Somebody show me that scripture. Anybody got a scripture for that? Because I ain't seen it. Now, I heard the word say that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. But the word, he says he delivers them. Now, if you never faced troubles, you wouldn't need to be delivered from it, okay? <laughs> and, and so often we get ourselves into this place where we are believing that life is not supposed to give us any hard times. One of my favorite passages of scripture, he says, I would have fainted if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait, I say on the Lord, be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Let me help you something. God did not tell you that it was not going to be hard. God did not tell you that you were not ever going to find yourself in a time of trouble. God did not tell you famine would never come. God did not tell you that death would not come. God did not tell you that sickness and disease would not come. What God told you is I got you. I know how to keep you in the midst of it. The word lets us know that trouble comes, but just because trouble comes does not mean that God is over, that, 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 that everything is over, that God cannot fix that thing. Uh, literally, God knows how to restore. I need that to be in somebody's spirit that God restores because I feel like so, so many times we have loss. We have had seasons of loss and, and we don't know what to do with the seasons of loss. I want you to know this, that God restores. God restores the years that the locust has eaten. God restores everything that the enemy tried to do to you. God knows how to turn it around. I'm telling you the best testimonies what are the testimonies we like to hear? We usually like to hear not the ones, oh, I, I was raised with a silver spoon in my mouth. And then guess what? After I was raised with a, a, a silver spoon in my mouth, then my dad gave me a, a small loan of just a million dollars. And I was able to build a, a, build a successful successful business with that, with that small loan of a, of a million dollars. Now, many of us, we sit around here like, my daddy ain't got no million dollars to give me. My, I mean, 
mean, literally, many of us, we're like, my parents ain't got 10,000 to give me. Uh, I don't want to hear about your million. That's not the kind of testimony we want to hear. No, the testimonies that we like to hear are, are from people who have been where we've been who have struggled like we've struggled, who have had the losses that we have, have lost, who have cried the tears that we have cried, that, that have sat there and, and, and their bodies have been wrecked with pain, their, their marriages were crumbling, and to see God restore that. That's what we want to know. We want to know that when I am in my worst situation, when life has beat me down and I don't want to get up anymore, that God could get me up out of that pit. Those are the testimonies we want to hear. That's what we want to know. And I just want you to know today, God restores. So here you have Naomi. Here, here we have Naomi. She's, she's in this place where, where her life has become bitter and she is blaming God. She thinks God has done this to her. And I love God because some way, somehow, God is able to be blamed for all of our problems and still be willing to get us out of them. Ain't that good? Like, you know, when people start blaming me for their problems is for stuff I didn't even do. And then they ask me to get them out of it. I am not, um, I, I am not as willing to help people who think I am the problem. <laughs> That's me. But, but again, I'm not God. Aren't you glad I'm not your God? You should be happy that I am not your God. If I was your God, things would be a lot different, but I ain't God. And so here you have God and he is like, even though he realizes that she blames him and she's angry and she's bitter, but God yet and still restores. God yet and still transforms things. God yet and still decides to move things you know this is a familiar passage and and we know how Ruth she goes out in the field and she begins to work and she begins to bring home all kind of food not only does she work she works hard and and the owner of the field says stay in my field don't go anywhere else and then he tells his workers, he said, y'all make sure y'all leave uh, a lot of food for her. You let her glean for, with, with the others and make sure she takes a whole bunch of food home and, and make sure that she's provided for. And when it's time uh, for y'all to get something to eat, y'all make sure you give her a portion. When it's time for you to get something to drink, you make sure she gets a, gets a portion. I imagine the first time Ruth came home with all this food, uh, Naomi was like, now who did you rob today? Where you get this from? You going around here robbing grocery stores how did this happen uh, literally but but she finds herself and she's like wow look at look at how god has taken care of us look at how god has provided for us she i bet you naomi was tripping because she was like she bringing home more food than my husband used to bring home she bringing more home more food than the girl what you doing I, I, look, I don't know what kind of hustle they taught you in Moab, but girl, work with it, okay? And so literally, she is being provided for better than she even imagined she would because of Ruth. Eventually, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's time where, where, where Naomi's like, look, I'm going to secure you a future. Uh, I'm going to get you a man. I'm going to get you this Boaz man. I, I, I'm pretty sure, you know? And so, so at any rate, Naomi tells Ruth what to do to, to get Boaz. But I want you to understand something. We always talk about Boaz being this kinsman redeemer. And we always talk about how he redeemed Ruth. But I want you to know the only reason why he redeemed Ruth is because she was connected to Naomi. Boaz was Naomi's kinsman redeemer. Boaz was Naomi's redeemer. When he goes to court, he says, Naomi has a field that needs to be sold. Naomi needs a kinsman redeemer. Naomi needs a redeemer for her life in her old age. After everybody told her she shouldn't have, she told herself, I have nothing left. I, there's nothing else that I could ever have. But Boaz was Naomi's kinsman redeemer. And because of Naomi, he could be Ruth's redeemer. I love the fact about that because when he goes, he says, look, Naomi has a piece of land. She wants to sell. Who will redeem this? 
And then he says, well, after he, they said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll buy the land. He said, well, you also have to take the, you got to take Ruth. You got to take her and raise up a seed, an inheritance for Naomi's son. She was raising up an inheritance for Naomi's son. Go to Ruth chapter four. I, I love this passage. It says, this is Ruth chapter four, verse 13. It says, so Boaz took Ruth and she, she was his wife. And when he had went unto her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. And the women said, who did they say this to? To Naomi. And the women said unto Naomi, blessed be the Lord who has not left thee this day without a kinsman. That kinsman means kinsman redeemer. The people of the town understood that even though he, he married Ruth, he said, God has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. That's your grandbaby. That is your seed. That is your inheritance. I'm telling you, God knows how to take your worst moments. Oh my gosh. God knows how to take your worst moments. He says, look, uh, and the women said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thy old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, is better to thee than seven sons hath borne him. Understand, I mean, understand this. We talk about Ruth, but this was Naomi redemption. This is a story of a woman who had called herself bitter, who had called, who had said the Lord had afflicted her. The Lord had messed her over. The Lord had taken everything from her. God didn't even have anything left for her. She was so convinced that she was afflicted of God. She thought that the favor was gone off of her life. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. Sometimes the devil will mess with you so much and he will attack you so much that you are convinced that the favor of God has left you. The devil is a liar. I need you to know today that the devil is a liar. The enemy cannot take the favor that God has put on you. The word of God says the favor of God, it surrounds us like a shield. Baby, that doesn't mean you're not going to have trials. It doesn't mean that things are, are not going to be difficult. Jesus said to his disciples in John 16, 33, he says, I've told you these things so that in me, you will have peace. In this world, you're going to have trouble. You are going to face tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. He said, I've told you these things. Now, what did Jesus tell you? Did Jesus tell you it's going to be easy? Did Jesus tell you, you weren't going to have no problems? Did Jesus tell you that you come to me and everything is just going to be hunky dory and, and peaches and cream all the time? That ain't what Jesus said. No, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, in me, you're going to have peace. I've told you these things that so that in me, you will have peace. So when trouble come, because it's coming, when, when, when it gets bad, because it's going to get bad. He said, when when in this world you will have tribulation, he says, but be of good cheer. Uh, don't, don't let the hard times fool you. Don't let the hard times uh, mess with your joy. Don't let the hard times mess with your sanity. Don't let the hard times make you think that I've forgotten about you. Don't let the hard times think that you are afflicted of God. Don't let the hard times convince you that God has forgotten you. Don't let the hard times convince you that this life is not worth living. Don't let the hard times convince you of a lie. He said, no, 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 no. In this world, you're going to have trouble. But be of good cheer. Baby, smile anyway. Uh, be of good cheer. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. I need you to understand that God is still moving on our lives, in our lives, regardless of how hard it is, regardless of the situation we find ourselves in. I want you to know that God is still faithful. God is still a redeemer. Well, uh, the word says, verse, verse 16, and Naomi took the child and laid it on her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women, her neighbors gave 
it a name saying, there is born unto Naomi. And they called his name Obed, and he was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Honey, see, we don't understand. While Naomi was sitting here crying and, 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 and believing that God, look, God was sitting here like, look, Naomi, I'm sorry to tell you, but your husband did not have royalty in his blood. I am sorry to tell you that the man and the sons that you had, they did not have what, what they needed to have to bring forth the king. He said, but God said, he said, I, but I know how to redeem your situation. Literally, her children's name meant weak. She literally, her son's name meant weak and frail. She gave birth of her own to her, her, her own power gave birth to weakness and frailty. Oh, but God, when God re began to redeem that thing, God gave birth to royalty. I need y'all to know that when you give birth whoo, to weakness and frailty, oh, Jesus, that's a good word. Oh, my goodness. We give birth to weakness and frailty. And then that thing dies. That thing does not become to anything. Oh, but when you give that thing over to God and you allow God to redeem your life, oh, the word says he redeems your life from destruction. Who? God is good. Literally, God knows how to redeem your life from destruction. The, you gave birth to frailty and weakness. And God gives birth to royalty. Literally, Obed was David's granddaddy, meaning that, that Naomi is David's great grandmama. I need you to understand that God knows how to redeem and give you better than what you ever had, better than what you ever dreamed of. Oh, the word says, uh, your ways are not my ways. He says, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so far are my ways above your ways, so far are my thoughts above your thoughts. God's thoughts about you are great. God's thoughts about you are awesome. God knows how to do for you what you can never do for yourself. Never do for yourself. So believe God. When he says that I'm a restorer and I'm a repairer of the breach, believe God. When he says I know how to redeem you, believe God. When he says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all, believe him. When he says I would have fainted if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Let's believe God today. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, you see your people today. Lord, you see how many people need to wait on you. Father, we need to see you redeem some stuff. We need to see you restore some stuff. Many of us, we've been, we've been, we felt like this was your fault. We felt like we've been afflicted of God, Lord, but we know that you are the God who wants to redeem us. You're the God who wants to restore us. You're the God who makes all things new, oh God. And Lord, that's what we're asking you to do in our lives. We're asking you to redeem. We're asking you to restore store we're asking you to transform oh god and we will wait for it father we will wait for it lord we will see what you do with us oh god father the word says eyes have not seen nor have ears heard nor has it entered into the heart of god what god has prepared for those who love him but you said the spirit will reveal these things father naomi had no idea that you were going to take her worst moment and turn it out for her good she had no idea that you were going to take that thing and you were going to give birth to royalty, oh God, that you were going to be her redeemer, oh God. Lord, she tried to send her redeemer away. She tried to send Ruth away, Lord. She told Ruth to go back home, not understanding that she was her redeemer, that you were going to use this Moabitess woman to, to redeem Naomi's generations, oh God. Father, you are good. Your mercy, it endures forever. So Lord, take our worst moment and redeem it. Father, you said you would comfort all who mourn in Zion and you would give us beauty for ashes. Lord, we take our worst moment, the ash heap of our worst 
and we give it to you. And we believe that you can make something beautiful out of it. You said you would give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We know heaviness is depression. You said you would give us praise for our depression. So God, in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of depression from off of your people. And I ask that you will put a song in their heart, oh God. Lord, that they will begin to worship you and praise you, oh God. And you said you would give us joy for our mourning. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you turn our mourning into joy, oh God. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, it comes in the morning. God, we believe you. Even in our tears, we believe you. We believe you that it gets better. It's not always going to stay like this, oh God, but it gets better. Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen.
Amen. We just believe we're just praising God for what he is doing. And we get to take everything, every need that we have to God in prayer. Let me bless you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your people, oh God. Father, I thank you, Lord. Your word says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, to make our requests known to you. And you have promised us the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It will guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Father, today, Lord, Father, we bring to you every care that we have, everything that we've been struggling with, Lord, the stuff we've been blaming you for, the stuff that we have just been overwhelmed with, oh God, we bring them to you, Lord. And we say that we trust you in this situation, God. We ask that you would heal us. We ask that you would redeem us, oh God. Redeem our lives from destruction, oh God. And Lord, give us your peace, oh God. Give us your peace about everything that we're dealing with us. And Father, According to your word, Lord, we pray that you, oh God, you would strengthen us with might through your spirit in our inner man, that Christ would dwell in our hearts through faith, that we being rooted and grounded in your love would be able to comprehend like all your saints should. Let us know the length and the width, the height, the depth. Let us know the love of Christ Jesus that surpasses all understanding, that we might be filled with the fullness of God and now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask, think, or imagine according to the power that's at work in us to you oh god be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever in the name of jesus we do pray amen and amen